I Google. Um, oh, I don't know where to start with Google. <laughs> uh, it, Google, you know, they have their new Gmail. <laughs> not which isn't that new anymore at this point. They have their site. It. You would think of all the companies, Google would be able to get a web UI right, but they never can. You're already in there. I'm not seeing them. Uh, all right, here. Let me take you out and add you back. <laughs> there, you're added back. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, it. They can't seem to understand the concept of. They're co Whoa. Okay. I don't know what that was. I'm sure it's copyrighted. It, I, I take it you don't use Google services that much, Bit? No, not really. What no. about you, Bob? Yeah, um, between Android and everything else, I use a plenty. <laughs> well, Android's not that bad. I like the Android UI. I'm talking about their web UIs. Like, well, no, I mean, in general, you asked if I use their services in general. Yeah, I use, I use it, Gmail, I use uh, Chromium, Chrome, whatever. And what's like. ironic is it works fine with the um, Android application and stuff. They just can't seem to make it work right with the browser. Uh, so I'm like, even with Chrome, certain, you know, I can't right-click on half a billion things that should be able to open in a new tab. It just pisses me off. Oh. It's like that's the feature that it, it existed in their HTML version, and they will not. They keep writing sloppy implementation of their code. On it pisses me off. Uh, have either of you looked at the Zoom Two? Not sure it should be called the Zoom Two. It's thinner, lighter, faster, tabletier, <laughs> whatever the hell that means. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was Apple who always said, it's thinner. <laughs> um, yeah, I have no interest in the Zoom, too. Uh, if, if I get a Android tablet, I'd probably go cheap and buy the original Zoom or whatever. <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's got, you know, they got the 32 gig shot, but I, I don't know. I, I, li I prefer Motorola, but I don't know. Okay, uh, privacy, more privacy bullshit with Google, if anybody cares. Apparently, they're, they're due to, to appease the Netherlands, they're having to allow Wi-Fi router owners to opt out of being recorded. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's like, I... I, I don't understand. I I, I miss yeah. I miss the memo. Like, it, it, oh, okay. it, is this something people are concerned about? That the geographical location of their Wi-Fi network is known. <laughs> I mean, doesn't your IP address pretty much large unless you're using like forwarding or stuff? pretty much give that away and if you're using forwarding or you know exit things it's not going to report your your network anyways I, I I'm trying to understand what the problem here is all you would have to do literally is change the name of your network after the Google truck came by if you're really that concerned about it Either one of you care? Is that a question? No, not really. I okay. mean, it's... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it doesn't really bother me any, though. So. Uh, apparently it bothers the Netherlands big time. Oh, no! Google knows my router is here! I must stop them! <laughs> um, I think some people... God love the Netherlands, but I think they spend a little too much time smoking... Not cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> not cigarettes. That's a nice way to put it. It's like the not cigarettes. Okay. Like, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. 
go. Okay. okay. Ah. All right. Moving on to the Microsoftian. Um, Marcel, you largely use OS X, so you don't mess with IE. Dark, you largely use what? Um, depends on my OS. <laughs> okay, so you might mess with IE. <laughs> um, yeah, if I can find it when it's not buried from me hiding it, I'm <laughs> um, <I wouldn't> <laughs> Okay, apparently Microsoft has realized that people are not using IE in excess, and they've decided that maybe they should try and do things to promote adoption of IE. You mean like by users? Yeah. <laughs> um... I'm just laughing at the irony of this, because in the late 90s, early aughts, Microsoft wound up before Congress, evil monopoly over IE. And now IE has fallen so far, failed to keep up with new technologies and complying with standards and other things so much that it has to buy users. It, we've gone from trying to convince people to buy browsers to browsers paying you to use them. I just... I, I don't know where to start there. Um, I, I happen to agree with the sentiments of this article. I mean, it's, I, 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 don't know, I don't know what hurts IE more. The fact that it, it's not... Can I, well, let me say this. My own personal use, you would ask me that, but all my customers use IE. Hot, the, all the hospital systems that want to run web-based, uh, anything... That are they, they, are they, they, they allowed to install a secondary browser, or do they have to use the one that came with the system? The, the hospitals mandate Microsoft IE. Every one of them. Every one. I know some libraries that do that, too. And, I mean, honestly, I think that's the only reason the IE user base is as large as it is. If there were not institutions like that that were just basically mandating use of Internet Explorer, I don't think it'd be as large as it is. Because those are people who don't necessarily like IE, but they don't have any choice in the matter. Um, it, it's the average user, if the user has any control over the system, it's you know, the first thing they do is go, I want to use something else. Uh, and um, I'll admit, IE9 is not a bad browser. It's not a, it's not the best browser, but it's not a bad one either. It, it's, it's, it's got enough improvements that it's usable. Um, it's still missing a few features I like, but it has a few features some other browsers don't too. Uh, but I think Microsoft screwed the pooch with it because they've exercised this everybody must be using Windows uh, 7 slash Vista to get it. Um, it, it uh, uh, let me ask a question. Your hospitals that are mandatory, i.e., uh, what Windows are they using? They're using lots of XPs with some IE6. Then IE sevens. Uh, well, they can't get no, IE nine. No IE nine. No one. They can't have IE nine if they're on XP. It's it's yeah, Microsoft no, won't let them. None of them are on IE nine that I know of. They're still using the XP. Some of them are Vista. Some of them are Vista, but they're. I'm trying to think. It's like IE seven, maybe some eights in there. Lots of sixes. Yeah, it's a, and that to me is where Microsoft screwed up most with IE9. You know, it, it's the, I, I honestly think this is just wasted money on their part to be paying people to do this because the people who would use IE are people who would use IE. You know, paying them to do it isn't going to incentivize them to use IE. Uh, uh, and those people who they wouldn't have to pay would download it for XP. You know, they just upgrade their 7 or 8 or 6. Uh, but 
they're not going to just rush out and go by Windows 7 to get IE9. That's <laughs> like, I, am I, I, I mean, can, can either of you think of anybody who would run out to buy IE, would run out to buy Windows 7 or next year Windows 8 to get IE9 or 10? That would be their motivation for doing it. No, there's no motivation in that. And for me, in hospitals, they're not interested. It's their main software for managing the patients and the systems. And if that and if that doesn't, uh, if 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 there is any type of hiccup, and 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 upgrading that, or if the provider is not even willing to upgrade them uh, to the, uh, you know, Windows Seven, it's not happening. But, but there's so many industries that. That, that I work with, that upgrading is such a slow feat because it's their mentality is that we've got it. It doesn't. It, it's not broken. It works. It ain't broke. Why fix it? Because well, exactly. they, cause the, they right. don't. They don't realize the ways in which it is broke. Well, but it doesn't mean to. That's that's a theoretical thing. It doesn't hurt them. You know, in the, in the pragmatic sense, they're they're doing business. Uh, they're. They, their machines may go up and down. They have to change out hardware. But it's like it's even like in my in my, in my, my mother works for a law firm. She she just now got off XP. Just now she's in school right now getting trained on Windows Seven in Office 2010. And she works at one of the largest law firms in the United States. Oh no, the, the law firms are way behind in that, and I know why. Law firms because of the way legal documents are structured. I don't know if this was the case at that, at that law firm, but every law firm I've ever worked with, they, until recently, most of them were using WordPerfect. They loved WordPerfect. They, they have, some of them have gotten switched over to Microsoft Word uh, because of things going on in other industries, but they know they can't go straight to like 2007, 2010 because nobody will know how to use it. They have to like start with a 2000 or XP and like increment their way up very slowly to a modern version of Word. I don't know if that's the case there. Or they, you know, the other thing is, I mean, they don't like you said, that ain't broke, don't fix it. But this is the other reason I really do think uh, Microsoft. I, I'm seeing Microsoft's mentality here. Their mentality is force upgrade, force upgrade, force upgrade, force upgrade for business. You know, force upgrades of IE, force upgrades of Windows, force upgrades of Word. You know, their their holy trinity of force upgrade. And I, for the reason you're talking about, there's a lot of industries that are ridiculously slow in this process because it ain't broke, don't fix it, and they don't want to mess with having to redo up team a jillion things. Um, do you think this is eventually, at some point in the next like two to three years, if they really make the push that some people think they're going to, to try and kill XP and force this upgrade by force, that it might backlash in them, especially on the business side of things? Yeah. They, yep. these, these guys have their own little microcosms and stuff that you and I argue as geeks and things like that, it, it doesn't, it, those, the rules don't apply. They, they, you, when you go and work with these people for companies like this, you just go in there with your goal of satisfying the customer. It's not, in, if you're going in there and mentality that you're going to educate them and try to do better, the amount of job and, 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 and workload that you're assuming to take on is so massively enormous that because you would have to then replace all systems, all software, and make all other third party dependent softwares comply. And that's just not going to happen. So they just they sit there, which is fine. I, you know, I, I, I came to terms with that. It, 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 there's, you just, it's kind of like the antithesis of the Apple mentality, is it not? It's, it's predominantly why. Microsoft maintains such a large user base across many uh, versions. They got so rooted into business, but that's it. Business is not as flexible as a consumer's because businesses have a whole lot more to lose than they do. Well, I, but that's what I mean. I, I, I'm getting the impression that Microsoft is intending in the near future 
to force business to make that upgrade. I, they can't. That's what I'm saying. They can't. Uh, 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 I, I agree with you. They can't. If they try, the Microsoft platform as a whole will collapse yeah. because yeah. It, it's... <laughs> I, I hope you're right. Because otherwise, that's going to be one hell of a what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was... Uh, it, it, how should, how should I, oh, I... Briefly, had stated it in my last video. Windows 8 looks to be like a consumer-grade operating system with all of its tiles and things and, and all that other stuff. You really do think they're going to have like a, a pro-slash-business server line that's nothing like Windows 8? That's like different. Hello? The, the, what? Say it again? You, you broke up. Oh, I said, you really do think they're going to have, like, they're going to be a forking? They're going to have, like, yes. a, a, another because version of Windows? The UI is too devastating for, for workstation use. The, the data, are you going to tell me, honestly, that the Windows 8 UI is for workstation for work? I, I think Microsoft thinks it is. I, I know it isn't. I, I, I don't know one of my customers. I don't know, like you say, hospitals, anyone who's entrenched in the classic Windows for Business that would touch Windows 8 if, if that's what they do. They'll take one look at that and go, ha! And they won't even look at it. Uh, and that is, like you say, Microsoft's bread and butter right there. Um, but I don't think Microsoft realizes that. I think they honestly think this is something business users will love. Because business users are all going to go get their slates. <laughs> now, well, Microsoft, I think, did, okay, what was it? They, they basically had said that they dropped legacy breaks. And then they extended it like for, for a certain amount of groups, right? Has that extension expired yet? It's going to expire completely and without reserve in 2014. That's still a ways away. Yeah. Well, uh, they, my, they, mom, my mom's law firm isn't bringing Windows 7. I don't know about these hospitals. Hospitals are just not flexible, man. I, I, I know. It's, they're gonna, it's, some of them might have to downgrade to 2000 if that push is put in, uh, which will be really interesting. Uh, and, and it's, I mean, it, it's it's going to be interesting. I the way I, I hope you're right because the the amount of unrest that's going to cause in the industry as a whole is just going to be, oh dear lord. Um, but um, I, when I'm hearing Microsoft get up and make all these press announcements about you know it's I, I'm like you guys are serious. It, it's Windows 8 is Windows 8. It, it, this is Windows 8 for everybody. You're serious. And I'm like, you guys are nuts. Because <laughs> that effectively makes all of those places dead end. They can't ever upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Okay, speaking of Windows 8, um, I happen to agree with this, but depending how Microsoft implements it, it'll be interesting. They're basically going to make for Windows 8 the security updates, as they say, less painful. Basically, it's going to just, by default, automatically update, and there will be no pop-ups, no notifications, no, no nothing. It'll basically just update it. And it'll either update flawlessly or you'll be unlucky enough to get one of those updates that wasn't yeah. vetted as well as it should have been that breaks everything. Uh, <laughs> but you won't know the system updated and that's what's causing it. Uh, I, I, I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, assuming all the updates were purely vetted against all things, which is impossible, uh, I'd be all for that. System should always be updated security-wise. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I've seen times where the update is what breaks stuff for a minor bug that wasn't even an wasn't even a vulnerability on the particular system that was updated. So it, I, I don't know. 